Bhutan is located in the eastern Himalayas, with China to the north and India to the south, east and west, with a land size of approximately 38,394 square kilometer and a population of slightly more than 752,700. 75% of the populations are still engaged mostly in subsistent farming. Bhutan remains today as the last Mahayana Buddhist kingdom in the world. Gross national happiness is the developmental philosophy of Bhutan, which was first advocated by His Majesty the Fourth King. It has guided our developmental policies for almost four decades, and all our efforts have led to strengthening of these four pillars popularly known as the Pillars of Cross-National Happiness. These four pillars are equitable and equal social economic development, preservation and promotion of cultural and spiritual heritage, conservation of environment, and good governance. For centuries, Bhutan has been able to preserve its diverse customs and values comprising of language and literature, the arts and craft, ceremonies, events, etc. The promotion of traditional Bhutanese art and Mahayana Buddhism has been preserved through the centuries, its continued patronage provided by royal family novelty and the clergy. Since then, the Zori Chusum, the 13th traditional art and craft, has been passed down from generation to generation and kept alive in the new and constantly changing environment. The art and crafts are very much a part of living tradition of the country and is considered as one of these four pillars of cross-national happiness. In observation to the important attach to the preservation and promotion of tradition and culture, Choki Traditional Art School was established in 1999 to commemorate His Majesty the Fourth King's 25 years of his glorious reign. The Choki Traditional Art School is founded by Dasha Choki Dorji a veteran artist who is also responsible for starting the National Institute of Zurich Chusu, the 13 Arts and Crafts, in the early 1970s when Dasho Choki Doji was the head of the painting department. His interest and love for the profession and zeal to keep alive this arts and craft inspired him to teach a few children at his house after resigning from the government service. He started the school by providing food, lodging and tuition free of cost to the children who were brought to him by their parents. <laughs> The Pesuni, the Ruchi Yahabidon Haberu, the Rangilam Lessus, who contended the Namasamid to draw down the two. The letting the Ibe, the Nacheragi, the Deleta, Yahabgi, the Mitamda, the Sawasum Luchachi Shu, Pusu Besachuru, the Rangan Lam, Pamiki to Ton, and Yahabdinalo, the Chachi Shuni to the Lemelam Tadibe, the Malod Sugu, which is a million Momadera, the Deleta de Litin the Inse. The school was first set up in a government-rented building in Kaunjasa Thimpu. The school, because of its noble objective to provide valuable skills training to the poor and underprivileged children of the kingdom, attracted many children to study at the school. All of these children admitted are mostly the youth from single parents and hail from economically and socially disadvantaged families. The students' number increased each year and it was becoming very difficult to sustain the school and also to operate the school in the cramped area of Kaunjasa Thimpun. Therefore, 
the school had to look for external support. In this regard, the school was very fortunate for having met Mr. David and Jennifer Bitwell from the Himalayan Youth Foundation, U.S., right on time. The Himalayan Youth Foundation helped the school in its most crucial phase of expansion and supported additional infrastructure facilities to relocate the school to the new location at Kabisa, which is about 10 kilometers away from Thimpu City. Until 2010, Himalayan Youth Foundation also supported the budgetary gaps which the school was unable to generate from the class and practical work and other fundraising. Since the school was started in 1999, it has only been able to admit boys due to lack of facilities. Nevertheless, the school was very fortunate to meet with Mr. Kenrath and his daughter Leela Fallen through Mr. David Bitwell, who supported the construction of Leela Hostel and added other facilities to include girls student into the program. In 2009, Choki Traditional Art School, for the first time, enrolled the girls in the school. It was indeed a great honor for the school to be able to give this equal opportunity to our financially disadvantaged girls as well. In May 2010, Mr. Mario Fontana, the founder and chairman of Fontana Foundation in Switzerland, took over the financial responsibility of the school from Himalayan Youth Foundation. Today, Choki Traditional Art School is the only private art and craft school in the kingdom. Currently, we have 144 students, 98 boys and 46 girls undergoing specialization programs on drawing and painting, wood carving, embroidery, weaving and tailoring. Both theories and practical lessons are properly interrelated into the curriculum to provide opportunities to develop the necessary skills and aptitude. Other subjects like English, Maths, Zonka and Computer are also taught at the basic level. Other curricular activities such as games, social works, cultural activities and Code of Etiquette form an integral part of the school program. So far, a total of 10 batches comprising of 68 boys and 9 girls graduated from the school. All of these graduates are doing very well today. Some of them are employed in the government service while some of them work in the private sector and rest are self-employed. All the students are now working across the nation supporting in the renovation works, further promoting arts and craft in the country. The school takes great pride to see that some of the students are already supporting their family members who are primarily living in poverty. We are proud of the good reputations they have earned. Their works are exemplary. The school is very grateful to all our supporters, well-wishers and organizations for their dedication and support extended to our school and for making it a success school in Bhutan. Your support made it possible in bringing a positive change into the lives of many children, their families and community. Nonetheless, in order to continue to provide free art and craft education to many more economically disadvantaged youth, 
and to enhance the quality of the training. We still need your support.